selection from the autobiography of freed slave Jermaine Wesley Logan, I'm pleased to introduce a New Yorker by way of Jamaica, poet, playwright, author, performer, Stacy Ann Chin. Mrs. Sarah Logue, yours of the 20th of February is duly received, and I thank you for it. It is a long time since I heard from my poor old mother, and I'm glad to know that she is yet alive. You sold my brother and sister and 12 acres of land, you say, because I ran away. Now. You have the unutterable meanness to ask me to return and be your miserable chattel or send you $1,000 to enable you to redeem the land. You say you're a cripple, no doubt to stir my pity. Be it known to you that I value my freedom to say nothing of my mother and brothers and sisters more than your whole body more indeed than my own life. You say you have offers to buy me and that you shall sell me if I do not send you $1,000. And in the same breath you say, you know we raised you as we did our own children. Did you raise your own children for the market? Did you raise them to be driven off, bound in chains? Where are my poor bleeding brothers and sisters who was it that sent them off to cotton fields to be whipped and to die? Wretched woman, do you think to terrify me by asking me to give my money to you or to give my body to slavery? I meet the proposition with scorn and contempt. I stand among a free people who, thank God, sympathize with my rights and the rights of mankind. If your emissaries come here to re-enslave me, I trust my brave friends in this city will be my rescuers and avengers. Pull you up a little bit to the 21st century. Being queer has no bearing on race my white publicist said. True love is never affected by color. I curved the flashes of me crashing across the table to knock his blonde skin from Manhattan to Montego Bay to bear witness to the bloody beatings of brown boys accused of the homosexual crime of buggery. <laughs> Amidst the new facts and fallacies, the new age claims that racial and sexual freedom has finally come for all. These under-informed, self-congratulating, pseudo-intellectual utterances reflect how apolitical the left has become. It is now commonplace to hear young activists of all races saying, the term black lesbian comes across as confrontational. Why can't you people just say you date people? <laughs> Tongue and courage tied with fear, I am at once livid and ashamed and paralyzed by the neoconservatism breeding malicious amongst us. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, ally, feminist, artist, two-spirited, non-gender conforming. Every year someone comes up with a new term for us. Yet every day, I become more and more afraid to say black or lesbian or immigrant. Every day, under the pretense of unity, I swallow something I should have said about the epidemic of AIDS in Africa or the violence against teenage girls in East New York or the mortality rate of young boys on the south side of Chicago. Even in friendly conversation, I have to rein in that Belhoxian urge to kill stupid people who say stupid things to me all day. Bitter, <laughs> 
day with the branches of things I cannot say out loud sprout deviant from my neck. Damn you, you racist, sexist turd. Damn you for crying about homophobia while you exploit the desperation of undocumented immigrants to clean your hallways, bathe your children, cook your dinner for less than you and I spend on a tax deductible lunch. I want to scream out loud, all oppression is connected, you fool. At the heart of every radical action in history stood the dykes who were feminists. The anti-racists who believed, gay rights activists who believed being vulnerable and giving women the vote could only make our community stronger as the violence against the poor increases. Where are the human rights campaigns in those neighborhoods where hate crimes occur most frequently? At the tide of the Supreme Court changes, where are the marches to support a woman's right to an abortion? And what are we doing about health insurance for those who can afford it. HIV AIDS was once a reason for gay white men to act up. Now our indifference spells the death of working class black women and imprisoned Latino boys. Apparently if the tragedy does not immediately impact us, we can make a fuss. A revolution once pregnant with expectation flounders apathetic and individualistic. No one knows what call to heed anymore. The faces that now represent us have begun to look like the ones who used to burn crosses. Progressive politicians still dance around the issue of gay parenting and the term marriage is still reserved for those unions sanctioned by a church controlled state for all the landmarks we celebrate. We are still hyphenated Americans and aliens and minstrel references for jokes created on the funny pages of our heterosexual white world. The current revolutionary manifesto is a corporate agenda, and outside of that agenda, a young boy is trading sex to pay for his dinner. A woman is beaten every 12 seconds, every two minutes. A girl is raped somewhere in America. And while we stand here, well-dressed and rejoicing, in India, in China, in South America, a small child cuts the cloth to construct the new slave trade of shoes and shirts for impoverished lives. It is time we put our bodies where our mouths have always been. Gather around, ye feminists and forward-thinking men. Come one, come all, all committed to radical social change. We are not simply at a political crossroads. We are buried knee-deep in the quagmire of a battle for our very humanity. The powers that have always been have already come for the Jew, the communist, and the trade unionist. The time to act is now. Now, while there are still ways that we can fight. Now, because the rights we have left are still so very few. Now, because it is the right thing to do. Now, before you open that door to find they have finally come for you.